Hello everybody, this is Daniel Whiteson from Matrix TSL and today we're going to be talking about the oscilloscope in Flow Code 8.2. If you haven't seen our video on Ghost in Flow Code 8.2 then I'd recommend you check that out and we've also, we've also um, released a video on the data recorder in Flow Code 8.2 and how that's changed from previous versions. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the oscilloscope, we're going to see how it's changed, how, how you would go about adding a uh, simple um, data stream to it, and then we're going to check out a slightly more advanced example with, with that, that utilises triggering. So if you look in front of you, you can see that I've, I've got a very simple flow chart here, it's just a, an infinite loop that sets port A to the value 0, waits 100 milliseconds, sets port A to the value of 1, and then waits another 100 milliseconds and then it repeats that indefinitely. So what we should expect to see on the oscilloscope is a, is a nice square wave with 100 millisecond intervals between. So how do we make use of the oscilloscope? Well now we've got these really simple buttons here which correspond to each of the four possible channels. So if we click the add data button we get our pin selection uh, screen. We'll just select pin A0, select add and then you can see here that a uh, the red channel has become active on the oscilloscope. So we're going to run this program in software mode um, using flow code simulation and, and we, sh we should be able to see the, the data appearing on screen. So if we press play, as you can see there you've got the data appearing on screen and in flow code 8.2 the oscilloscope draws from left to right and, and overwrites the previous image like a, like a real oscillos a hardware oscilloscope would. So that's quite cool. And as you can see we can drag the the 0 volt line up and down if we want to change the offset and using these drop down boxes below the, the main part of the screen we can change the height of the, the stream as well so so currently it's set to 1 volt per divider which means that each of these squares represents 1 volt we can change that for example to, to 2 volts so that, that changes the relative height of the stream so that's how, how you go about using it in simulation mode if you wish to send the program to a chip, you can just um, click the compile button. That sends it to the microcontroller. So currently we've got a BL0011 E Block 2 connected via micro USB. So that's the PIC programmer from the E Blocks 2 range. So once that's compiled, you'll you'll be able to see the program on the chip as the LED flashes there, so that's port A um, toggling very quickly between 0 and 1. And if we click the ghost button, we see live data from the oscilloscope as well. We can zoom in to, to see the data closer up as well, and we can, we can change the height of the stream. So it's very easy to use, very simple. We're going to take a look at a slightly more exa uh, advanced example now, which um, makes use of triggering. So if you look on the webcam, you'll see that I've got the debug eBlock connected to port E of the eBlock 2. And what we've got connected up is a probe. I've just got a very simple sine wave uh, signal generator running. And if you go into the ghost options, you can see that we, in we can increase the sample rate very high. So, so this is a sine wave, which has a 10 kilohertz frequency. And we can set the channel to view analog data, so I believe it's uh, analog 32 for port E0. And then if we zoom in sufficiently close, because this is a very, very fast wave, you'll see that if we set to 100 microseconds, we turn ghost on. You can see the sine wave happening there. So we'll change the height of that as well, so it's easier to see. So that's a very, very high sample rate. That's, that's the E-block sampling at 250 kilohertz on a 10 kilohertz frequency wave so so about 20 25 samples per per peak and trough there and as you can see that's that's moving quite quickly it's very hard to actually get a fixed view of the data so this is what things like the triggering are for so if we activate trigger mode and we set it to just a single a single in uh, sweep type and we say that we're interested in firing the trigger when there's a rising edge now what that means is as the wave passes this horizontal line here the trigger will be fired. We can set the vertical line to any place we want where we want the, the actual firing point to be represented. So we can set, set that about there. And we want to set the source of the data. So that's channel one, which is the analog 32. So that's the pin that the signal generator is running on. And if we are on the trigger, we'll, we'll expect it to fire pretty much immediately because it's a very fast wave. 
And if we click on, we'll see that. There we go. We've, we've now suddenly got the wave. So what's happened is it's detected that after pressing the arm button, the trigger's fired. It's been it's it's gone above this horizontal line the wave has, and we've started drawing it from this vertical point, and then it's drawn the remaining part of the wave as well as the data before it. So we can actually move this left and right if we wish to see different sections of data. This is of course a very simple repeating wave, so so the data looks looks the same more or less um, regardless of where where you set the trigger point. But if you have a a source of data which which sometimes doesn't happen that often or it happens very quickly and then disappears again the trigger can be very useful so you can you can also set it to falling so that that corresponds to when the data uh, source falls below the line um, you can you can tell it to rise or fall so whenever it crosses the line in either direction um, and you can set it to repeat trigger mode as well so what that means is the trigger will fire the data will continue until it draws to the edge of the screen and then the trigger will be rearmed. So in this instance, you'll see that actually the data's constantly redrawing because the, the wave's moving so quickly that actually the, the trigger fires, the the wave reaches the end of the screen and then it refires again. So you see it's happening very, very quickly and, and the, so quickly even that spikes in the in the voltage actually could show up show up on the screen. So, so that, that's how you, how you use it and you can turn trigger mode off you can set it to 3v3 mode, which tells Flowcode you're using 3 volt 3 e block. So that, that changes the relative height of the stream. And of course, you can add multiple streams at the same time as well. So if you recall, we had we had a very simple program running with a square wave. You can add that at the same time. Um, of course, you're zoomed in so far that that actually you, the, the oscilloscope struggles to draw. <laughs> Um, such a such a relatively slow moving wave, but you can you can zoom out to to see data at the appropriate time interval. So so there we go, and of course you can view multiple waves at the same time as well. So hopefully that that gives you a good idea of how the oscilloscope works. Um, it works in both simulation and hardware mode using Ghost, and I recommend you check out our other videos on Ghost. Thanks for listening.